Hey guys, Leviathan here with Gambit Gaming. Gonna give you a quick recap of, uh, I guess, kind of a vlog uh, detailing what happened in our games, kind of the prep going into it, uh, and what actually happened. So, in the first match against CJ, um, we knew that we needed to prepare like a different composition uh, than what we uh, have been showing in LCS for our match, because we we. I've been scouted out as playing like a, a linear style of play with the AOE top laner and uh, Betsy on, on Zed and Arya and some assassins. So we decided that we would pick up uh, Twisted Fate because we believe he's currently like tier 1.5 or tier 2 uh, right now, especially when people are banning away Zed from us. Uh, and we just thought that Twisted Fate would throw them, uh, maybe give us the edge that they maybe weren't entirely prepared to play against Twisted Fate because I'm not sure if there's anyone playing it in the Korean region. Uh, so we had trained uh, the, the, the Twisted Fate composition and it was extremely successful in scrims. Uh, we wanted to apply lots of early and mid game pressure because CJ uh, has been known historically, or not historically, but in the replays we analyzed they were a pretty passive team in the early game. Uh, the jungler likes to farm a lot and uh, they play a lot around Coco. Uh, and so the plan going into it was, yeah, play a, a, a early uh, and mid-game composition, uh, pressure mid lane and invade the jungle. Um, we managed to do it, but we weren't doing it successfully enough. Uh, and even though we did get six towers, we didn't get six towers fast enough. Uh, and we made a couple of mistakes in the dragon, uh, dragon area, uh, which ultimately uh, cost us enough power for us to close out the game because they had a superior like, game composition, obviously. Um, so. We had a plan, we didn't execute as well enough as we needed to, and we lost because of it. And then going into the World Elite game, uh, we knew that he played Diana, but we couldn't afford uh, to put a ban in on Diana, uh, because the, when you when you go into a, into a game, you have to look at all the champions your opponents play, and historically, uh, or, or going into the tournament, um, we had some issues with uh, the champions that we had banned, I think it was like Maokai, and uh, I forget our last ban. But uh, like the champions that we had banned instead of Diana uh, were more problematic to us and causing us to lose. Uh, whereas uh, Betsy has had success playing uh, Twisted Fate against Diana. Um, the matchup is like really good for Twisted Fate uh, pre six, but really bad post six. But you can abuse the the weak pre six on Diana uh, just by spam ganking her. Um, so we like oh and uh, Betsy has no experience playing the Ari versus Diana matchup, so we didn't want to give him a first time matchup uh, on stage in an elimination match. Uh, so. We ended up uh, doing an early gank onto Diane in the mid lane, but uh, and, and blew her flash. Uh, but we never returned. Like, uh, had we continued to apply pressure to the mid lane uh, during the pre six uh, time, I think uh, the game would have been a bit more successful than it was. Uh, our game plan going into it was um, what we what we spoke about before the match was we should keep a, a low energy, like low action laning phase uh, because the world elite had two substitute players, and when you have substitute players, your your team fighting and team cohesion is uh, lower than it should be because you don't have enough time to practice together. Um, well, it's not what we did. We ended up uh, invading blue uh, around seven or eight minutes, I believe, like their second blue buff, and uh, that just sp like sped up the the pace of the game uh, not where we wanted it to be. Because if you look at the, well, one of the last team fights uh, around Dragon Area where we kited them back into our blue, we were actually playing the team fight very, very well. And I feel like had we not had this large gold deficit at that point of the game, uh, we would uh, like that's a fight we would win. Uh, so I felt like we, we strategized correctly, but we didn't execute uh, inside the game. So uh, going into this next week of uh, training and preparation for the next week of LCS, uh, we're going to be focusing on uh, how to actually set up a game plan and then to execute it in the game. Because we can talk about it all we want when we get into game, uh, but it seems like we have issues uh, we're staying, staying to the game plan and sometimes maybe a few players like to go with the flow of the game or what they read, what they see, but I think it's actually more important just to stick with what we prepare. So, um, yeah, that's kind of a wrap up uh, for uh, how our matches went at IEM, what we were thinking. Uh, sorry to the fans that uh, we dropped out so early, but um, we're going to watch our replays, learn from our mistakes. Uh, and we have like two really good international replays uh, that can you know, show us what we can do to improve in our game. Uh, thanks, guys.